guys, welcome back to Room 237 as I continue my marathon of Italian horror and giallo films. And this is yet another zombie movie. I know I've been doing a number of those lately. And it's one of probably two or three left that I have. I have two more zombie movies. I'm not sure when I'll get to those. I'll probably go back to doing giallos after this. But this is a pretty big cult film. I know a lot of people really like this zombie movie. And I've heard the title, but I've never seen the movie up until now. And it's actually a co-production between uh, uh, Italy and Spain. And that is 1974's Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Now, and of course, this is the Blue Underground release. I always get those. Uh, <clears throat> in all, this has like... I think 15 different titles that has been released all over the world as the most common ones being uh, living dead at Manchester morgue, which blue underground has also put out, uh, uh, but also don't open the window. Those are the three biggest ones, but I like let sleeping corpses lie uh, the most and is directed by George or Jorge Grau, not quite sure how he pronounces it. It's spelled Jorge, I think it's pronounced George as well. And it's heavily inspired by Night of the Living Dead because originally he was approached, uh, he really wanted to make a horror movie, but he wanted to make one that was totally different. He wanted to make one that was more. Uh, wicked and more I think about Satan or witches and this one studio head or producer uh, asked him if he liked Dead or Living Dead of course he said yes and that's what the studio wanted and so he said no and someone else actually made the movie he wanted to make and then he was reapproached for Dead or Living Dead kind of rip off so we ended up making this. And uh, Grau has said that he does really enjoy this film. He is pretty proud of it. And it's a bit more realistic than Not a Living Dead. There are some plot points that are the same, especially the ending. Uh, it does star Ray Lovelock, who was in Autopsy. Christine Galbo and Arthur Kennedy, which Arthur Kennedy, uh, he's an older generation actor that's kind of was at the end of his career, kind of cantankerous. And Grau actually put a lot of the real life Kennedy in this, or at least he felt he did. Uh, he's actually an American actor. Special effects were done by Giannetto De Rossi. And the music was by Giuliano Sorgini, which the music definitely uh, deserves its own credit in this. It's very much like a Chainsaw Massacre sound effect kind of score. Uh, so as I said before, uh, it's a huge cult film. I mean, this has an 86 on Rotten Tomatoes, which zombie films outside, like J George Romero films, don't really get that high. <laughs> And it's easy to see why people like this. It's certainly one of the most atmospheric zombie movies I've ever seen. Uh, it, it does go at a, at a good pace. I mean, it's only 93 minutes. It does take a while before the real zombie carnage begins. Like, there isn't even a Manchester morgue until the last 15 to 20 minutes of the film. And for the most part, it is one lone zombie. But it does such a good job at building its atmosphere that it's definitely worth a watch. Now, the story is pretty simple. I mean, Ray Lovelock, he has this artifact that he's trying to get to a shop in England... And he's on a motorcycle, but at a gas station, his motorcycle is hit by a car driven by Christine Galbo. And so he has her give him a ride, which she lets him drive her car, even though they're strangers, 
not everything in this movie makes sense. Um, which actually, she's trying to get to her estranged, drug-addicted sister's house, which is on the way, and she's going to let this stranger borrow her car. But anyway, they stop at this farmhouse to ask for directions. And at this farmhouse, there's this um, agriculture department using this new machine that's going to use uh, radioactive sound waves to kill pests. It's like it's sort of insecticide done with radiation and sound engineering. Or, uh, was it? sound effects uh, of ultrasonic radiation and this is what brings our first and main zombie uh to life and when this zombie appears it's probably one of my favorite zombie scenes in any zombie movie i mean it's so well put together so well orchestrated and the atmosphere is so well constructed and built in this scene which I, I do want to get the name of the actor who plays the sort of main zombie. If he's even... Uh, I don't even think he is uh, listed. Yeah, he's not even listed as like a main zombie. It was a guy that drowned previously. And whoever the actor is so and that's another thing that Grau does however these people die that's how he incorporates them as a zombie like this guy he drowns so he's always wet he approaches by this graveyard and also it's the beautiful English country so there's rocks and hills and green these are stumbling zombies, slow stumbling zombies. They are a little bit more intelligent. But the music starts off as like this underwater, like, whomping sound. Like this, whoa, 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 whoa. It just keeps building up as the zombie slowly turns towards Galbo. And then there's like this muffled roaring sound, which all those sounds are done by Growl himself. But at first, I thought it was just part of the score. I thought it was supposed to add tension and atmosphere. Apparently, it's the sound of the zombies as well. Other scenes, that's more obvious. But in this scene, it does make it sound more like part of the score. And just the zombie, she gets in the car. He comes up to the car. He tries reaching in through the window. And that music and that roaring sound is just building up faster and louder. A very atmospheric scene and also their eyes are like red with like a starry black iris similar looking to like 28 days later which I do consider a zombie movie so very atmospheric and then eventually this zombie works his way through the country ends up at her heroin addicted sister's house whose husband is a photographer kills the husband attempts to kill the sister which by then Lovelock and Galbo show up in the car he's afraid of lights which that's another thing zombies are really only afraid of light and fire and then because of the murder of the brother-in-law uh Lovelock and Galbo sort of end up in this um case with the police of murder first they they suspect that the sister, the wife, killed the husband. But then they quickly shift to uh, Lovelock. And Arthur Kennedy plays the lead inspector. And he's just a cantankerous asshole. Like, he's really only trying to finger Lovelock because, you know, he's got, like, the Beau Duke hair, the beard, the leather jacket. He treats him like a, like sort of like a Manson family cult member. Like, you damn hippies. Which I think is funny. And he's trying to prove that 
the murder was done by this reanimated corpse. And so he's, he, he, the whole point of the film is that he's trying to prove that these corpses are coming back to life. And even though it does take a while for more carnage to happen, there's very little gore scenes. But when there is gore, it is bloody. And it is, it is well done. But the atmosphere is there. And yeah, the voice dubbing isn't that great. Like, I don't buy the English accents. I don't know if it's Lovelock or someone else doing the dubbed voice. But, yeah, the accents do sound a little silly. There is at one point where Lovelock and Galbo are in this uh, mausoleum. And the zombie is able to... Like, he touches this sort of radioactive blood. And he comes over to these two bodies that are in the mausoleum. And touches their eyelids. And that radioactive blood is able to bring them back to life. But then later on, when they bring the husband's body to the Manchester morgue at the end of the film, <clears throat> they're just, the bodies just start uh, waking up. So it's not as consistent, but... And yeah, uh, Grau said that he wanted it to be a little more realistic than Night of Living Dead, so that's why he made the radiation, radiation, uh, uh, pesticide. And so as the film goes on, you know, Lovelock becomes more and more entangled with the inspector and in this case. Of course, uh, two cops get killed by zombies in the process. He does destroy the machine that has the ultrasonic, uh, radiation on it. He, he just comes off as crazy, but Arthur Kennedy just does not want to believe him. There's even a couple good jump scares, like they, Lovelock and Gabo split up at one point, and she's at this gas station, and the, the woman who runs the gas station, her young daughter, the young daughter is going to get her a glass of water, but when she turns around with the water, it's like this upward shot, she sees the zombie and she smashes it out of her hand. Kind of a well done jump scare. The scenes in the mausoleum were fairly uh, suspenseful. Um, Grau said he wanted to incorporate some of the parental scares from his childhood. Like parent, his parents used to tell him that if he misbehaved, the undead would grab his feet from under his bed. So the only way Lovelock and Galbo can get out is on top of this one thing and to dig themselves out. But the the uh, living dead keep grabbing his feet. So, uh, and I did see that in the uh, interview that's included on this. And I'm going to get into spoilers because this does have a bit of a shocker ending like a night of living dead ending so i'm gonna say spoilers but i do recommend this i mean yeah zombie films are like slashers you want to see the carnage you want to see the blood the gore the effects but and as little as this has there's really only a couple scenes but you know if you can appreciate other technical aspects that make it worth it, like atmospheres, score, sound design, even the look of the zombies, which is fairly simple. I mean, they're not overly done up like other Italian zombie movies. Then I do think you'll enjoy this. If you just want another blood-soaked, dead alive, fast-paced, yeah, you might not enjoy it. But I really did enjoy this. And it's easy to see why it's a big cult hit. So the ending. Spoilers. The ending. The. Uh, uh, Arthur Kennedy. And you know. He wants Lovelock. He wants to pin the death of his two officers. 
the death of the Galbo's brother-in-law, all the deaths that have happened and everything, he wants to pin on Lovelock. But Lovelock is able to get away. He steals a police car, gets in a high-speed chase with them. He finds out that Galbo has been taken from the gas station to the hospital in Manchester, which has the morgue. And this is when okay, Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, even though it's the last 15 minutes of the movie, he gets there and he finds out the best way to stop him because they don't stop when they get shot. They don't stop when they get shot in the head. The only way to stop him is with fire. They, they freeze with fire and you barely have to touch them and they go up pretty easily. Like the line in uh, Night of Living Dead. And there is this uh, a scene that I thought was pretty suspenseful, which Galbo already seems pretty crazy that they put her away in this one room and strap her to the bed. That when this zombie comes in her room, she's screaming for help, but the orderlies are kind of ignoring her because she's already been screaming all night. So we kind of, they just leave her be. So she's strapped to the bed while the zombies are coming after her. I thought that was a well put together scene. But by the time Lovelock gets there, she's already been turned. She's already dead. So he's already burned all the other zombies. He burns her. But then, out of nowhere, he's shot. He's shot a bunch of times. There's Kennedy standing there. Then he shoots him in the head. And he's dead. So it has that downer ending. Like Night of the Living Dead. Now, I thought it was going to end right there. Being an Italian film, I thought, okay, there's the end of the film. But, no, there is an epilogue. It shows Kennedy going home, finally goes home, and the zombie of Lovelock is already there, and he strangles him. And then we see the agriculture uh, radiation machine is put back together, goes back out to the, the farm, and shows that it's starting up again, which means the whole cycle is going to repeat itself. And yeah, the ending is a little silly because how did Lovelock get from the hospital where they're going to store the dead bodies in the morgue downstairs past all these cops? And Kennedy drove, which, I mean, Lovelock had to walk. And how do you know where he lived? Yeah, it's a little silly, but it was one of those sort of comeuppance type movie because you are made to hate Arthur Kennedy's character. He is just sort of an asshole inspector. It, it wasn't a complete ripoff of Night of the Living Dead. I mean, I know I've talked about a series of Italian zombie movies in this marathon and each one I've said is very derivative of either Dawn of the Dead or Fulci Zombie or what have you and I've said just how derivative it is this yes it is derivative they were trying to make their own Night of the Living Dead but there's definitely a lot of its own merit here I'll even say the score as much as I love the score in a Romero's film, it's definitely put together well in here. Especially that scene with the first zombie. Which I'll say, even the scene with the first zombie is almost as well done as the cemetery s scene in Not a Living Dead. It's a very uh, unique looking zombie like you see a picture of it you know exactly what it is it's a standout there is a cemetery nearby even up to the downbeat ending and yeah it is a bit more realistic where there is the explanation as to why they're and how they're coming back to life but it's not very consistent i mean yeah it's this radiation but then this other zombie can just touch blood to islands of the dead and then they'll come back 
also the gore scenes. I mean, one of the cops that get, gets killed, a zombie rips his eyeball out and eats it. There's this one poor girl, this uh, receptionist at the hospital. These zombies come up behind her. They, like, reach down her chest, and you see them, like, rip her skin. And it, pretty well done. I mean, it looks like they are, like, grabbing a hold of it, tearing her skin. Then another one seems to, like, reach in deeper and pull her organs out. But it's very quick. Like, it's just enough to see. It, it doesn't linger, which I thought was fine. It... You know, it, it's a perfect blend of atmosphere and gore. Uh, Grau also explained how he did that effect. He found an actress who was flat-chested so they could make this big prosthetic sack with all the stuff in it that they needed. So yeah, there's very little gore scenes. In fact, the zombies are more into, like, strangling, really. But, uh, yeah, especially when that receptionist is, like, chest rips off and she gets disemboweled. I thought that was excellent. But definitely the score and the atmosphere is one of the strongest elements. And that doesn't always happen with the zombie movie. So, and I do agree with uh, a DVD drive-in. One of the best zombie films ever made. I honestly don't know how and why I had never seen this movie before, but I'm glad I did. I thought it was going to be another one, like, oh yeah, one of the best, really. I thought it was just going to be another generic Italian-Spanish zombie movie, but it's actually a standout. It's, just, it's up there with Fulci Zombie. I like it better than... Certainly like it more than Burial Ground or, you know, Zombie Holocaust. I still have to do Hell of the Living Dead, but, yeah. There's a lot to like about this film, and I do recommend it. The only thing is I will say it is kind of slow-paced. It does take a while before there's multiple zombies and actual getting to where there's people but i like how a lot of it is just this one zombie it, it does kind of make it a little bit more intimate also with how Grau puts how they died as part of who they are as zombie so like some of the zombies we follow we see them as characters beforehand so i thought that, that was fairly interesting as well. So, yeah. Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, a.k.a. Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, and Don't Open the Window. I actually really enjoyed it. So, stay tuned for more uh, reviews of Italian horror and Giallo films. I got a bunch more to uh, get through. Um... Uh, my collection recently broke 100 titles, so I will be doing a full collection video soon. And then I do have a bunch more Giallo films that I want to get, and then once I tackle that list, I'll do like a full Giallo update collection video. But I do plan on keeping this Italian marathon going for quite a while, because I'm really enjoying it, and people really seem to like the recommendations, so... Uh, uh, really digging that. Feel free to let me know what Italian films you're looking to hear my thoughts on. So, uh, uh, thank you for watching. Oh, oh.